Root canal through your brand new front porcelain crown. Ugh. In this week's case, a 55 year old avid cyclist hit a pothole and fell off his bike. He had a crown placed several months later and then it started. Unbearable pain to hot and cold liquids. Let me show you how I was able to efficiently and predictably root canal his tooth and get him back to loving dentists. Okay, maybe not the last part. I'm Ash from All Things Dentistry and I'm passionate about sharing those unwritten tips and hints in dentistry. If you want to learn more about endo and see some simple tips to tackle teeth, check out my free root canal course in the description box below. Okay, let's get started. Of course, placing a rubber dam is critical during endodontics and this butterfly dam clamp has wings so it allows you to fly more efficiently and place the rubber dam at the same time as the clamp. You're going to notice that there are dark marks on the crown. That's a bit of Sharpie marker that I placed on the tooth to ensure 100% that we were doing the right tooth. And you know what, it may seem goofy, but I'm telling you, dentistry is 100% about patient safety. So my goal is to make the smallest footprint possible. So I start going through this Emax lithium disilicate crown with a coarse diamond. And then when I finally get into dentin, I switch to a long shank carbide burr because I know the length of the burr from the angled part of the shank. But honestly, it felt like I was going a little too deep, a little too fast, so I decided to switch out to a Munz burr, slow speed round burr with a, a long shank, so you can see what's going on at the tip of the burr. And then finally, bam, we're into the pulp chamber. Okay, so I'm happy with my access, and there's that aggravated pulp that we need to remove. So I use my Wave & Go Primary as my orifice opener to remove the bulk of the pulp tissue before I navigate apically. I'm also using a brushing stroke to open up the orifice to get more of our irrigants in and also remove more of the, the hidden pulp tissue that's hidden in the pulpal horns as you'll see later. So once I get to two thirds of the root canal, I'm gonna get my working length and off we go down to the apical constriction with my Wave & Go Primary. So lots of irrigation with full strength hypo because we need to make sure that we dissolve all that vital pulp tissue before we obturate this case. Here's a side view of a Max Recentral incisor and here's the pulp tissue inside. And this is when we make our smaller access to conserve tooth structure. And sometimes when we do this type of access, as compared to the conventional, we leave this type of pulp tissue right here. And it's hard to see it if you're not using a microscope or high powered loops. And whether the tooth is necrotic or vital, we need to remove this tissue from this area of the pulp chamber because it may cause the endo to fail down the road and or potentially cause a darkening of the coronal tooth structure like in this case. And I'd argue that this darkening, this little band here, may actually have been from pulpal tissue that remained after the vital endo was completed. And then you had a breakdown of the pulpal tissue products and you get the staining. And here's another schematic of what we're talking about. So when we do this, our endo access, and we don't flare it all the way incisally, what happens is this pulpal tissue remains. So without flaring this, what we can do is we can use our slow round burrs, or even high speed burrs as well, and ultrasonics to get remove this little lip of dentin and remove this tissue there. So here's a picture from a textbook showing you some of that vital pulp tissue that's hidden up around that sort of nook and cranny. And in this case, that's exactly where it is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Munz burr and slowly draw it coronally into the pulp chamber and remove all the remnants of the pulp horn as much as possible. And this patient's 55 years old, so there's not a huge pulp horn. However, it may stain and that's the last thing this patient or anybody wants, especially under their brand new crown. So I'm gonna get my final working length and off we head to the apex with our wave and gold medium. And again, we're going to irrigate now after a wave and gold medium with lots of full strength hypo. And here is a final look at the preparation. There's a little bit of a dentin ledge that I'm not gonna remove. I'm not happy with it, but it is what it is. Now we're gonna activate our irrigants. So I'm gonna go through a cycle of hypo then with EDTA and then with hypo. And then, then we're gonna fit our gutta percha point. I'm gonna do a little bit of manual irrigation activation with the gutta percha point. Then I'm going to go to my reference point, which is the incisal edge. And let's take a measurement. And we're right on the money at 20.5. 
We're going to dry the canal with our paper points. And then place a BC sealer. I love this stuff. It's amazing. I'm going to take my cone, coat it with some BC sealer as well. So I'm going to pump the cone up and down a few times. And then we're going to take a working length radiograph. This radiograph doesn't tell me very much, so I'm going to take another one. And I'm actually a little bit short, so I'm going to extend the gutter percha point by 0.5. And they're going to sear the orifice, pack it down, take a little more away, pack it down until I'm right at the CEJ. And that's the beauty of the hydraulic condensation technique with bioceramics, is I'm not playing around with down packing and sending the gutter percha out the apex. This is way too simple. Okay, so now we've got our obturation completed. Fairly predictable, and off we go to restore the tooth. So the first step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna etch the pulp chamber. Then I'm gonna place my dentin bonding agent and light cure that. So on top of the gutter percha, I'm gonna place foldable composite, and it's so much easier to place the flowable rather than conventional composite. Next, we need to etch the porcelain. So I'm gonna use hydrofluoric acid. So I'm gonna rinse off the hydrofluoric acid and then I'm gonna place a siling. And what this does is it allows us to bond to the porcelain crown itself. And after drying the siling, then we place our dentin bonding agent, which now bonds to the siling and our existing composite restoration. And we're gonna gently blow dry the adhesive and then we're gonna light cure it. And now I'm gonna place my final composite restoration. I'm gonna contour the restoration to the palatal surface of the crown, but honestly, I find the finger technique is usually the quickest and most efficient and smoothest. So we light cure the restoration and here's a final x-ray. Look at that gentle, smooth curve. I love it. Thanks so much for joining me. Don't forget to check out my free root canal course in the description box below. Please place your comments below, share, like, and we'll see you next time.